There's really no safe like Simply Safe. I've been documenting renovating my 1929 Spanish home, and we're now working on the office space, which is right off the main living room that features this cathedral ceiling. I opted for an olive green color and started painting that on the walls in the last video, and then I decided what if we transferred the wood ceiling into this room as well, which is pretty crazy to think about. So that's what we're doing this week, transferring the wood ceiling into this room, which will be fun. So let's do it. Hi, welcome back to the channel. Drew here from Lone Fox, and today we are installing a wood coffered ceiling in my office. Now, this was an idea that just popped up randomly as I was painting the office. I was painting the walls green. I did an olive green color in the office, and as I was painting them, I was like, what if we did the dark ceiling in here? Like, what if we transferred it from the living room area, which already has the original cathedral ceiling, and have it kind of transfer into the office space? I'm a huge fan of any wood panel whether it's on the wall, on the ceiling, whatever it is, but I absolutely love a wooden coffered ceiling. Like when it's done in actual wood, I do love a painted one too, but when it's done in actual wood, I think they're so beautiful and they're kind of hard to come by. So I thought it would be nice to DIY and recreate my very own wooden coffered ceiling to kind of coordinate with the original living room. Probably gonna be one of the largest DIY projects I'm undertaking, I will say, and we have to go get a bunch of wood. I've been researching so much for this project to, um, I just wanted to see, you know, what slats I can use, what beams are the best, what application is the best to apply them, and I feel like I have a pretty good understanding, but we are going to need to head out and get some supplies, and today's video is kindly sponsored by Simply Safe. and as all of you know, I've had the Simply Safe home security system in my house and in my previous apartment for years now. I absolutely love my Simply Safe home security system, but they actually just came out with a brand new camera. This is Simply Safe's new smart alarm wireless indoor camera and it's the first camera that can actually stop intruders in their tracks by playing an actual live siren and it also has two-way audio so the agent from Simply Safe can actually talk with the intruder to let them know like you need to get out like we can see what you're doing and it's not good because if I saw someone in my home I would be like get out get out now Using the smart alarm camera, there's also priority emergency dispatch, and this is because agents at Simply Safe are actually able to verify there's a threat in your home and have emergency out way quicker than if you were to not have the smart camera. As many of you guys know, I love my Simply Safe. I've had it for years and years, never had a problem with it, and it's only kind of given me the reassurance that my home and all of my belongings are safe, and myself, of course. And not to mention, Simply Safe has every single sensor, detector, and camera you need to make sure every facet of your house is completely covered and protected. You can also build your system which I love and it's sent directly to your doorstep and the install is so extremely simple I installed my entire system in a 5,000 square foot home in a little under an hour and a half which I personally feel like was so seamless everything connects up to the app and it's just extremely user friendly which I love because I feel like security systems can kind of be a bit daunting sound like something hard to adapt to or just kind of introduce into your lifestyle but simply safe really does adapt to your lifestyle and I find myself turning it on probably more than I should just almost all the time. So if you would like to save 20% on your Simply Safe security system when you sign up for a fast protect plan, then you can get your first month for free by visiting simplysafe.com slash lonefox because there's really no safe like Simply Safe. So we're in the office space and this right here is the ceiling that we are going to be turning into a coffered style ceiling. Now we already have our beams that run this direction and these beams actually have some of the original paintwork on them which I really like and what we're going to need to be adding first are beams that actually run in this direction. So as you can see I have some wood here. I actually ended up getting this at a local wood store called Ann Walt and that was because they offered three by six pieces of wood which I've never seen a three by six before. I've seen a two by six, a two by four, a four by six. Never seen a three by six, but that is the exact size of the current beams that are in the ceiling. So I was able to find it, which was great. They're actually pretty heavy. We're going to be cutting them down to the proper size and then pocket holing either end of them and attaching them and mounting them to the current beams that are in the ceiling. So that's kind of the process there. And then the light is gonna kind of drop from our center square. Once we have all of our larger beams added for our cross sections and we have our grid kind of created, then I'm going to go in and add slats. I think we're going to start with the side closest to the windows because we're going to be able to see kind of the beams in alignment with the windows, which is probably one of the most crucial sections.
first beam, but I did cut it a little big just to be safe. Okay, it's not gonna fit. It just needs a, sh a little sh a trimming. I'm back. Looks good. It's the wrong color though. No, it's not. I like it. <laughs> So I picked up this Craig jig that basically allows you to create pocket holes and I'm gonna want to pocket hole these into the edge of our already attached beams so that we don't have to like screw this into the ceiling. And so I'm gonna place this on and then clamp it down. I really like this one because it's super universal. You can move it around, you could do any direction or angle, whereas like I have this one as well. Uh, but this one you can only do widths up to like this thick. You just go in. That's all. And it creates a perfect pocket hole that you can then screw in and then your screw will be hidden and we can cover this with wood filler. We have the pocket holes in either side of our beam and now I'm going to screw it in. In case you want to recreate this in your 1929 home, um, <laughs> it's a two-person process. Yeah. <laughs> ah, sawdust in my eyes! Oh! Sturdy. Sturdy. They make this thing like a special skirt that doesn't even work. Let me bring you in for a close-up. Look at that, you guys. Looks really, really nice. I actually realized if you do the pocket hole closer to the top where we're gonna be screwing it in, the slats that we're gonna be running the opposite direction will actually totally cover this up right here. So that's a little tip is to have your pocket holes closer to the top edge that's gonna be against the ceiling. Welcome to day two of this ceiling transformation. And this morning, Justin actually cut down all of the slats while I was editing episode one. So this is what the slat pile is looking like. And Justin, would you like to tell everyone what you have done here? First things first. <laughs> I um, did all the measurements of everything. He like redrew the ceiling. Redrew so the like ceiling. the ceiling looks like this from the boards that we added I, yesterday. I gave each one a number, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, each one has like the slightest bit of measurement because obviously there's human error and it's a house for 1929. And we're adding trim around the edge of all of this, so if they don't meet up perfectly, we're gonna have probably about a half inch to an inch of trim covering. There's 99 four. total slats here. Except for accidentally cut one extra, so there's 100 exactly. We're gonna be using 99 of them, and one of them is gonna have to be cut per box because it's not gonna be a perfect fit just based off the size. So we're gonna start installing the first section and we pre-cut these down. This is actually select pine from Lowe's and I will say this project is not a cheap project but it is also not a super expensive project. Being fully transparent with you guys, this ceiling, the entire thing with stain and everything is gonna cost around $700, which is expensive but when you think of the impact that it makes in this office space, I really think it's gonna be worth it. For applying these to the ceiling, we're gonna be using a brad nailer and these one and a half inch brad nails. 
And yeah, that's really all. And keep in mind when you're applying slats like this to the ceiling, you actually want to kind of shoot the nails at different angles so it holds it up as opposed to shooting them all straight up. It has a potential to fall. We're actually using this right here as a spacer. It is just a row of the nails, but it has like the perfect quarter width, but it's long, so you can actually like make sure it's nice and stable. So I'm gonna start like at this end, push it in there as a spacer, and then just kind of move it down. We have the first section paneled, as you could see. Now there is a little board that we're gonna have to cut down a bit smaller here, and this is for every square because they are the same dimension. So each left side of the square is gonna have a skinnier board, but we are adding trim around the edge, so do not even look at these edges. And then once it's all stained, it's gonna coordinate back to this beam here. And I'll say that this section here only took like maybe five minutes to put up. So putting it up is pretty quick. It's just the process of cutting and measuring that takes quite a while. So after we figured out the first one, it was pretty smooth sailing from here. I would say that the most time consuming part is definitely cutting the boards, but if you were to cut all of them at once and kind of follow the method of mapping out all of your different coffered squares that you have and then kind of measuring each of them, putting it on a piece of paper and doing all of the cuts at once, it definitely makes the process a little bit quicker than having to measure each square and then going down and cutting each individual slat. So kind of think of it as an assembly line process and that's going to speed it up just a little bit. This is what it is looking like so far. We still have to add this piece, but we're gonna do all of those cuts at once, so it's just more efficient. the light spot we actually did need to cut out the little piece of wood that would be covering it essentially so we just laid the slat over the top of it and then marked the two spots to cut and it just happened to be that this was underneath only one slat which was just out of luck but if you do have to cut two or more than that just cut them as needed and then we also did use a circular saw to cut these boards down just so they weren't as wide as the previous ones to fill in the gaps for that 11th board on each of the squares because 10 of them fit perfectly and then we had to trim down one <gasps> Look at that. The base of the ceiling is done and it looks so, so good. I am so happy with how this turned out. Tomorrow we are gonna go in with the stain and apply that on the actual boards and then do some trim work around the edge and it will be good to go. I just, it looks so good. And the light cut out also, so perfect. It just happened to like line up with one of the uh, strips of wood. It is the following morning and we are starting to trim out these boxes. As you can see here, this is a trim that we're adding. It is a simple three quarter inch, just square dowel essentially, but we got them in eight foot sections. So Justin has been out here mitering away. There he is. Um, and yeah, we're adding those. It's just super simple, kind of cutting them for every single spot around the edge. We're gonna do all four sides of all nine squares.
To trim out your squares, you are gonna wanna measure each section of trim very precisely and also individually. You can't really cut multiple pieces of trim at once just because each trim might slightly differ. So I suggest measuring each piece of trim and then marking that measurement onto your piece and then cutting them as you go. So here we are marking that measurement onto our piece of trim, bringing it outside and cutting it at a 45 degree angle. That way the mitered corners meet up on the square and create a nice seamless look. Once you have two of your pieces on either side, you have to cut a piece that will then fit right in between, just like that. And just, I like to do nail up and then nail into the beam, and then up. Laying down some paper so that we could start staining, but am I the only one that thinks this like cardboard paper smells like an actual butt? Like, I'm sorry, it smells so disgusting. Like, it gets on your fingers. I think cardboard boxes smell like literal butt. I, this smells like butt. I think it's just foul. The whole room smells like it. Anyone else? Don't you think, I Justin? Agree. It smells so bad. So the stain that I'm using on the ceiling is my tried and trusted Varathane gel stain in the color Kona. This is the color that I used on that table that I created in the breakfast nook and also the color I did for the Ikea table that I did recently. It's my favorite like dark walnut color and I'm hoping that it's going to just match the original tone of the beams there. Justin is taping off around all of our molding that we added which looks so nice. I don't even think I actually shared with you what the finished molding looked like. Look how good that looks. I'll be putting on these gloves so that I don't stain my hands because that is very prominent with me. <gasps> oh my gosh. I'm should, scared. I, should I go in? I'm scared. I'm shaking in my boots. I know I recognize. It looks like so unevenly stained. <laughs> So patchy. I think it just sucks it up so much. I think you really just have to keep putting more and more. You can see all of these little cracks. So when I first started applying the stain, it definitely was splotchy and it just looked uneven. It did not look good until I applied like an excess amount of stain and really like worked it into the wood. Almost like if you could imagine rubbing lotion onto something or like really like applying an excess amount and then just wiping away any of the excess gel stain that's on the surface. That's what really gave it like the most intense look. I was just scared of applying a bunch of it because it is super dark in the can but it does totally wipe off like it kind of just coats the surface gives it a nice even finish and then you could wipe away all of the excess that's what i really like about a gel stain is i feel like it's pretty forgiving and you have some time to work with it before it actually does dry down so in about an hour, we were able to do a third of the ceiling. Justin's working on this one right here, but the stain is looking so good. I feel like it even matches the original beam really nicely. It would be pretty challenging to get like an identical match, but I feel like this looks pretty good. And I'm excited once we take the tape off to see how it kind of meshes together. Hello, good morning. The ceiling is done. 
on and it looks so so good look at how good it looks like oh I should probably get out of the way so you can actually see if anyone follows any LA based influencers you would know that we have had no sun over the past month like maybe a day or two out of the last month so it's kind of challenging to show this in all of its glory because i feel like when it's sunny in here it's so pretty i did actually have to repaint the entire room after doing the ceiling because the stain got all over the walls and we chose a flat paint so it kind of sucked it up i want to share with you guys so look at this so this is a ceiling and then it transitions into here perfectly it is so Seamless, I love it. In this room, it's a little warmer feeling just because of the stained glass that's in this room, but it is such a perfect color match. You can even see with like the original beams, we didn't even touch those at all. And the color looks so good. This is kind of what it looks like when you're in here. If I get up a little closer so you guys can see everything, it's really, really pretty. And it's like perfect. I feel like we did such a great job. I'm not one to like, praise my projects but i feel like this project really like it looks so great with the ceiling out here i love it and in the first video i shared with you the desk and the rug for this office space but as you know i'm wanting to do some stained glass windows over here so i'm thinking that might be my next video then bringing the office fully together so probably about two more videos and this office is going to be complete but i'll catch you all in my next one if you are not already make sure to subscribe to the channel and click that bell icon that way you get notified of new videos and i will catch you in my next one bye